Hello substreamers and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about something straight from a medieval spellbook, it's alchemy. But what if I told you that modern day scientists had actually found a way to create gold? Stick with us, this is a really interesting video, I hope you enjoy it. And if you're not yet subscribed, remember to hit like, subscribe, notification bell, and even leave a comment if you just wanna say hi. Now, before I get into the history, the background, the law, and the origins of alchemy and how scientists have managed to create it uh, in the modern day, kind of, we'll get there, um, I want to run a bit of a thought experiment with you later in the video. Uh, so for now, what I want you to do for the next few minutes while you're watching the background of alchemy is just think what ways would the world drastically change if it were possible to create gold, right? Uh, if alchemy were real and commercially available or widely available, how would that influence the economy, people's lives, and, you know, just the general world around us? Think about that, and we'll discuss it later in this video. So stick around for that, because I've got some really interesting and well-researched points. Now, let's get into the background. So I guess the first question for this video is what is alchemy? Now some of you have played different kind of video games, you may be familiar with alchemy as the skill or art of being able to turn anything into gold, but it's more than that. If we go back historically, uh, it was a mix of philosophy, mysticism, metallurgy, uh, and more. And even medicine kind of comes into alchemy in some ways. So. What we're talking about with the birth of alchemy is a period in time where people believed that everything, literally everything, I mean, look around, all this beauty, was made from the four elements, earth, wind, fire, and air. Uh, and so early chemists, scientists, philosophers believed that alchemy was the way forward and that they could somehow turn anything into gold or anything into anything else. Now, their ultimate goal was the legendary Philosopher's Stone. Uh, yes, even uh, Harry Potter fans will be familiar with the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, it was the idea that there was a stone that could lead to eternal life, could cure all diseases, uh, could turn anything into anything else, even achieve spiritual enlightenment. Uh, it was the ultimate tool of self-improvement, except it wasn't real, at least no one had ever seen it. Uh, it was more of a myth and people believe that it could be found somewhere and basically change the face of Earth. Now, if you go search alchemy, you may come across different symbols and different stories. There's one that I like is the Ouroboros, uh, which is the snake eating its own tail. And that's symbolic of rebirth and transformation. And it's something that you'll find in many different cultures around the world. And so alchemy wasn't you know just found in one particular place there was different forms of alchemy happening in all different ancient cultures uh, I'm going to give you an example Jabir ibn Hayyan or Geber as he's often known in Europe uh, he was a foundational figure in Arabic alchemy and basically he theorized that metals were all formed from a combination of mercury and sulfur uh, and so therefore you know by being able to figure out the right balances, you could basically create anything. Another one is Paracelsus in the 16th century. He basically rejected most of the knowledge of medicine at the time. Uh, instead, he wanted to uh, basically do the right thing, which was to create specific drugs and specific cures for specific illnesses, as we do um, nowadays. Uh, back then, they thought that one thing would cure everything, right? So they were looking for the perfect cure for everything, which of course doesn't really exist. So then you've even got another example, Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, now he obviously gave us gravity and calculus and lots of other incredible things, um, but actually uh, what many people don't know is that his main focus was on alchemy. Uh, and so uh, yeah, he also had this belief in the vegetable spirit uh, and he felt that alchemy was a divine path to understand the universe's secrets and thank you car for interrupting that scene now the face of alchemy has changed somewhat over the centuries from uh, let's call it ancient mysticism to what i guess we now call modern chemistry and it 
kind of started to change around the 17th century uh, with a scientist called Robert Boyle. And Robert Boyle is responsible for um, a lot of early medicine. And uh, yeah, he, he kind of started to shift the focus from mythical transformation into empirical observation you know, what can actually be done. Uh, well, then, in the 20th century, things really took a change with the birth of nuclear physics. And nuclear scientists realized, hey, uh, if we start messing around, like, with the very uh, building blocks of atoms, protons and neutrons, uh, then we really can actually start to change the elements or change one element into another. Uh, now, it's not easy. It's not very efficient, as I will explain, but it is possible. And so any alchemists watching this, this is, uh, this is good news. Um, it's not new news, but it's good news. There is some new news which I will reveal, but keep watching. Uh, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. So all of this brings us to the present day, uh, where physicists at CERN's Large Hadron Collider, the LHC in Switzerland, which you could say is the world's largest atom smasher, has successfully, recently, turned lead into gold. In case you missed that, yes, they have managed to turn lead into gold. Alchemy is real. Can you believe it? This is crazy. Yes, the thing that has been uh, plaguing and, you know, the mystery for a thousand years, perhaps more. It's real. Wow. Who'd have thought it? So the question you're probably asking now is how? How did they manage to turn lead into gold? Well, those who are very proficient in science will know that lead atoms have 82 protons, while gold atoms have 79. Uh, so the scientists, they weren't using magic, uh, they were just using incredible multi-billion dollar machines to smash lead nuclei together uh, at incredibly high energies uh, in what they call ultra-peripheral collisions, um, and basically nucleus are smashed out of uh, the element. When they're smashed together, um, they knock out three protons and a couple of neutrons from the other lead nucleus. And so very briefly, uh, they create a gold atom. Uh, yes, a gold atom. It's not very big. Um, it's a massive scientific achievement, no doubt. Uh, I think it's incredible, obviously, because I'm here making a video for you substreamers because I thought this news was so fantastic. Uh, but, yes, uh, let me talk about practicality and cost, because I think this is absolutely phenomenal. There are some amazing statistics here, or some amazing data that I've compiled about the cost. So keep watching. Let me tell you about the output, because uh, it's not very much. So during an entire run at the Hadron Collider, they might kind of accidentally produce just a few picograms of gold. Uh, that's... A picogram is a trillionth of a gram. It's basically nothing. It's dust, right? It's atoms. The other issue is that they only exist for just a few seconds unless done right. They literally just fragment back into the ether, I suppose. Uh, scientists have found a way, however, to, you know, keep the gold, right? If they do it right, they're able to produce actual gold. But to give you some perspective, um, the amount of gold produced, again, not very much. So if they wanted to produce a notable amount, it would take time, it would take energy, resources, multi-billion dollar machines. Uh, now, scientists have actually published the cost to produce one ounce of gold. Uh, and it's somewhere in the region of one quadrillion dollars. Uh, now, to put that in perspective, I believe there's about 100 trillion dollars on Earth. Uh, now, some economists may argue with that, but let's say, therefore, the entire wealth of Earth or the financial capital of Earth combined would produce, let's say, about three grams of gold using this method. So wildly impractical, hilariously expensive, absolutely ridiculous, not very feasible. Alchemy is not coming anytime soon, so don't expect to be making gold in your shared garden or workshop anytime soon. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, all of the gold that is produced that doesn't fragment into the atmosphere 
is radioactive, so would actually make you sick. Uh, but there's a better reason, in fact, a series of better reasons why we probably shouldn't be making gold using this method. Uh, and that leads me back to the thought experiment that I mentioned in the beginning. I want you, I wanted you, I still want you to think about how the world would change and be impacted if it were possible to easily make gold. Uh, and now it's time to get into the, that, those points, sorry. That's it, let's get into it. I wanna know what you thought, so let me know in the comments how the world would be impacted. I've done my own research and I'm gonna share it with you. So let's say, for example, by some miraculous breakthrough, alchemy does become commercially viable uh, and you could literally take leaves and turn them into gold, dirt, soil, anything, and turn it into gold. The impact would be absolutely catastrophic. There would not really be any good outcomes. Now, Again, I want to hear your opinions on this, but I'm going to tell you what I think would happen to Earth um, if this is what happened. So, first, gold is about supply and demand and the fact that it's a scarce resource. So once it becomes uh, in abundance, it loses all its value and will absolutely plummet. The price of gold would pretty much become zero, especially, uh, that's especially damaging considering that it's used as a store of value um, and if it were to become as common as sand it would not really have any rarity it may still have some industrial uses so its value may not go to absolute zero we may then find new uses for it because of its abundance um, but it would not hold its value like it does now uh, and that's bad news for the gold mining industry which would pretty much disappear overnight poof gone uh, and all of the billions and billions of dollars that are there and thousands tens hundreds of thousands of jobs that are part of the gold mining industry um, think about this one perhaps uh, may Im would impact you the most would be the collapse of central banks uh, even though you know the dollar has been depegged from gold a long time ago <sighs> Sorry, I've got ants on the camera. Um, banks still hold a lot of gold uh, to to back their currencies, um, or central banks of you know nations hold gold. Um, and wow, if it becomes worthless, so do your currencies. The dollar, uh, the pound, the euro, many others, completely just going to become worthless. Um, and we'd have to reevaluate and redesign the global economy. Uh, uh, very fast to avoid complete societal collapse. Now that's very, would be very good news if you hold cryptocurrencies because I think they would then become the de facto currency. Bitcoin would become the new global currency uh, in the face of gold's absolute collapse. It's also getting attacked here. Very bad news uh, if you're holding gold as an investment because your investment would be gone. And um, yeah bye-bye money, bye-bye wealth. So let's say overall it would be a massive economic earthquake. It would lead to wars, famine, disasters, uh, all kinds. I can't even think that big to imagine just how damaging it would be. Perhaps you can. And again, I'd like to know in the comments, there's probably been some kind of sci-fi or something or, or fiction that's covered this story. I don't know about it if there is, but I'd love to read it. A world where gold and alchemy is real and just how bad that would mess up the earth if that hasn't been written I'm gonna stake a claim to it that I want to write that um, staking a claim that's a that's a gold joke there for you I want to summarize before we move on to the next bit the great paradox of alchemy right the alchemist dream to convert anything into gold paradoxically would make gold worthless so if the alchemist's dream were to be fulfilled, it would crush his own dream or her own dream and turn their most coveted and beloved element into something worthless and trivial. 
No, something philosophical to think about there. Now, I'd just like to say a few words before we wrap up about the spirit of alchemy uh, and how, I guess, beyond the Large Hadron Collider, the spirit of alchemy does still survive or exist in some different forms today. I guess you have these contemporary alchemists who believe that alchemy is more of a metaphor for the transformation of self, of philosophical spiritual and not only physical objects and um, about how we can grow and enlighten ourselves and even as we look at some of the more modern scientific research is being done like cold fusion or low energy nuclear reactions they themselves are based in alchemy right where people believe that making changes at room temperature um, you know with unknown forces and unknown scientists and discovering the ability to do so uh, I think it's something that's yeah born from alchemy and still exists to this day um, but they're not always mainstream science they're not always successful either but they still kind of represent humans fascination with transmutation and I think that's why this video was important for me to do because if you look through the hundreds of videos that we've done here on on substream there's always a focus on change and at its very simplest form alchemy is just change changing one thing into something better and i like that i like to think that we are able to change ourselves into something better and whether one day we're able to change objects into other objects remains to be seen and so substreamers there you have it from medieval mythology to the philosopher's stone all the way to particle accelerators smashing atoms together to accidentally create gold the dream of alchemy has kind of been achieved and yeah even though now we know that it's scientifically possible to do it we know that we probably shouldn't right because it would pretty much ruin earth as we know it um, and it would not be the shortcut to riches that alchemists believe that it would so right now the best gold is the one pain from the earth sorry painstakingly mined from the earth that is the best gold and the only gold that we will probably ever know in our lifetimes but the real gold the best gold in the universe is you substreamer so remember to like subscribe and leave a comment and if you have any thoughts and opinions about this video please do leave us a comment we'd love to uh, love to get back to you on that uh, if you enjoyed this deep dive into alchemy and you're looking forward to more of our videos you know what to do see you next time